Hi YouTube, it's Kathy. I did a poll on Instagram to see if anyone wanted to see another spectacular standalone video, specifically where I read the weight of the stars, and uh, so far everybody has said yes. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've got some fruit, I've got the ebook on my phone already because I bought it when it was cheap, and it's time to read it. So I assume Dawn would be the name of a person, but it is in fact the time, and then uh, she's gone into her brother's room to wake him up, and uh, said I'll be back in 10 minutes, and the next chapter is uh, uh, 15 minutes later, so let's see how that went. So far each of the chapters has been about a page and a half long, and I really hope that's not going to keep up simply because the last time, aka the first time I did a spectacular standalone vlog, I went into the book not knowing there were over a hundred chapters. So I'm really hoping I don't have to stop every two pages to talk to you, but uh, now we're at 30 minutes. What I do like about these very short chapters so far is they do say a lot in a very little. We found out that James is her younger brother, Charlie, who I assumed was another younger brother, is possibly James's, it's not quite clear, and their parents died about a year ago and James has been silent pretty much since. Uh, confirmation in the second paragraph that it is in fact James's baby. Also, I should probably mention that our protagonist is a girl named Ryan. They live in a trailer park together, and uh, there's a much bigger town closer, but they can't live in that trailer park because it's not as safe. I might just have to resign myself to that each of the chapters is going to be about a page, which is going to mean so many updates in this book. It's going to be so long, so I hope you stick with it. Not a lot of people expect anything from Ryan, so she's kind of fallen into this role of being that person that is just always late because people are gonna think she's going to be late anyway and people are gonna be rude to her so she's just gonna be rude right back. Apparently the person that chose to be rude to Ryan in this scene is also new which is perplexing to Ryan because that doesn't happen very often. So her teacher stops her after class and is like, Ryan I need you to do something for me and that's befriend the rude girl, her name is Alexandria, and she explains that there's some circumstances around why Ryan might be able to help her but we don't know what those are yet and because Ryan is going to get a little bit of a bump in her grade if she does it she's like, yeah sure I can totally do this. This. In this chapter we get an introduction to Ahmed who's Ryan's best friend and he has three parents, two dads and a mom, and that's just fantastic casual representation. Apparently they became be best friends because in the fifth grade some jerk decided to call Ryan a dyke, and even though Ahmed and Ryan had never talked before, Ahmed just like backhanded the guy and they've been best friends ever since, which is just great. We learn a lot in this chapter. Ryan likes to basically adopt all the strays at her school and make them her friends. Also we found out exactly who Alexandria is. Turns out 20 years ago there was a space program that was part of a privatized space thing where they were getting young women and sending them into space and they're never coming back. And there was this whole controversy because one of them gave birth right before they were sent off and the family didn't know about it until she was already in space and not coming back. And the child was given to the family afterwards and it was tried to be a cover up thing. Anyway, Alexandria is that child, which is why she's going to need some help in life, and uh, Ryan just seems really excited about helping people that have had tough times, and already that makes me love her. I love that Ryan and James are so in tune with each other that James can just tell something's wrong with her and just keeps trying to needle her about it, but is completely nonverbal, so it's just in actions, and I really love all of the different types of representation we've gotten in such a short amount of time. So the Bird siblings, because their last name is Bird, um, are in the supermarket and Alexandria is yelling about their stuff not being there because they recently just moved. It doesn't seem like the perfect time to try to adopt her into her circle. Brian is exhausted but still having trouble sleeping because her life is really hectic, so uh, yeah, I get that. Ryan tells Ahmed about seeing Alexandria at the store last night, and Ahmed's like, I know you, you're gonna try to adopt her into the friend circle, so just do it already, or be another person that she's yelled at, because apparently she's already yelled at like five people at school. She is not having a good time. Their theory is she's lashing out because she has emotional problems, obviously to do with her mom, which makes sense. Ryan approaches Alexandria in the lunchroom, basically sits down and tries to be nice, and Alexandria just like dumps her food and leaves rather than talking to Ryan. So Ryan goes back to her regular table and just talks about regular teenage drama crap, which is just such a giant switch, and I love that she's going to be patient with this. I love how much Ryan really just completely accepts her family and that's what it is, and how James seems like a great parent to Charlie, which is just 
wonderful and she compliments him on the fact and he's just like, yeah, well, he's my kid. And then he communicates by typing this into his phone and showing it to her, which is just so cool to see. Ryan was on the way to a party at the end of the last chapter and the last thing James said was don't punch anyone and then the next chapter opens with her punching someone so I love how they know each other and basically she just got kicked out of the party, decides to leave and bring her friends with her. I relocated to the library so the boyfriend could get some work done without having to hear me talk to a camera every once in a while. They are driving home from the party and they see Alexandra is sitting on the roof of her house and Ryan makes them pull over so that she can basically start yelling at her and basically it's just like, yeah, you're gonna have to tell me your name, otherwise I'm just gonna make one up. And it seems like Alexandria finally relented to just doing that small part, which is just like Ryan's little bit of a way in. I'm really enjoying her so much right now. <laughs> I love that Ryan knows enough to know that you can't just be nice to people to get them to open up. Sometimes you need to be mean back to them and that's how you, they kind of relate to you. And that's mostly what we know from that next chapter. Okay, they've taken things a little bit further than I thought they would. Basically, it seems like they're pretty much bullying her, but she's giving back as much as they're giving. And Ryan seems to know kind of exactly how far to go. All of her friends are doing these little things, but so far she's kept her hands clean, which is just really fascinating more than anything else. Mrs. Marsh, the teacher that asked her to befriend Alexandria, keeps her behind and is like, I don't know if I feel good about your methods. And basically Ryan shrugs it off. She's like, yeah, well, it was I had a harder time with Blake. And that's because he's the only person that successfully punched me in the face, but I got him to rehab, didn't I? And apparently she's just really good with people. And her teacher's like, you should be in a bunch of different advanced classes. She's basically like, I don't have the time. The teacher's like, you have the time for this? Is it because it's more important? And you can tell it is, but she won't say it, which is just lovely. Much like the title of this chapter, this chapter is a blur, and I think that's because Ryan might be high. I think. But she seems to be having fun. On this night of adventures, they found Alexandria sitting on her roof again, so somebody threw a bunch of gravel up at her. Basically, she yelled at them that they're pathetic, and uh, Ryan said, if, well, if we're pathetic, what does that make you? And Alexandria picks up one of the rock sets on her roof, throws it with stunning accuracy right at Ryan's face, and knocks her out. So the rock didn't knock her out, but it did make her bleed, and basically Alexandria stood up to see what she had done and fell off the roof and everybody ran back to the car, except for Ryan wanted to check if Alexandria was okay, but then Alexandria's dad basically yelled from the house that they should get away from the house, so they did. They're back at the trailer park, they've collected Charlie from the woman that watches her, they're both freaked out, and every time she hears sirens, Ryan wonders if they're coming for her. So nobody at school really knows what happened, some people think that Alexandria jumped or was pushed. James is just giving Ryan the cold shoulder, basically like got up in the morning before she got up, took his kid to the daycare, made himself breakfast, left on the school bus instead of taking the bike with her because she usually drives them both to school on her motorcycle and basically just left her a note that said fix it. Mrs. Marsh is mad and has basically told Ryan she should probably leave Alexandria alone. Ryan shows up at Alexandria's house, knocks on the door, her dad opens the door and she's just like I'm sorry and he lets her into the house but tells her not to touch anything. So Ryan and Alexandra's dad basically have a discussion about what happened. Alexandra's in the hospital, she's got a broken arm and she fractured, fractured her skull, but she's going to be fine. She was on the roof because she always waits for messages from her mom, who, as we know, is in space. Basically, Alexandra figures out a way to like make this situation better. And it's going to be interesting because he said, okay, if you're going to be here, I need to know about this thing from your teacher, so I need a note from her saying that what you're saying isn't complete bullshit. And then I need a signed note from your parents saying that you're allowed to be here because basically she's going to go on the roof and scan for messages to make sure that um, Alexander doesn't miss anything. And I'm just like, she's just gonna show up and play the, by the way, both my parents are dead card the next time she comes over? Like, what is this? So Ryan goes home, tells James about her plan. He seems to think that she's doing a step in the right direction to fixing it, but he's also going to forge the notes so that she can actually go and do this thing for Alexandria. The father said that he did a background check and it cleared out, which makes me wonder why he doesn't know that her parents are dead and just accepts the letter from her guardian, who is not her guardian because her, she is the guardian of James, which also makes me think, how is she the guardian? She is not of legal age. How is this all happening? I, I don't know. Alexandria spent the night, basically four hours sitting on the roof, waiting to hear anything. She doesn't hear anything. She ends up eating some of the candy that's there because she gets really hungry. 
but that's about the extent of it. Even though she's not supposed to touch anything in Alexandria's room, after about a week she starts bringing her books up onto the roof to read while she's just sitting there and waiting for a message to come in, and she loves books. This is a thing I didn't know about her before, and she would love to have as many books as Alexandria has, and it seems that Alexandria might not even need have read these books because it doesn't seem like they're well worn or anything. Her friends finally know that she's been doing this and they're just like, what the fuck, Ryan? And she's like, I am not scared of the guy. Like, I could beat him up. It's fine. And also none of us can afford to be sued by this guy because we're all really poor and they have space hush money. So I'm just basically helping everybody out by doing it. And they're like, okay, but like, stay safe. And also we kind of want to go visit Charlie. Can we do that when you're not there? And she's like, yeah, just ask James, obviously. Ryan's just sitting on the roof again and then starts to hear a little bit of music come through, but that's it. He runs downstairs to tell the father that she got something, he listens to it, he can name the piece of music, and they're about to go see Alexandria so that she can apologize. They get to the hospital, Ryan does not want to be at the hospital, they wake up Alexandria and she's just like, why would you bring her here? And Ryan tosses the recorder on the bed and just runs away. Ryan has walked home, which took a long time because the hospital was far away and obviously she left her bike at uh, Alexandria's house. And she basically wakes up James be like, I'm not going to school tomorrow, so you're not going to school tomorrow so you can sleep in. She feels really small right now, just really terrible. Ryan has decided that this day off is going to be a family day and they're all gonna go to the beach together. It's cold at the beach but they basically just sit there looking at the water and Ryan is sad and they miss their parents but they know that they are a family and they're going to be okay. When they get home from the beach, some of their friends are there and they basically are there to hang out with the baby and they have s'mores and a campfire and that type of thing. But Blake is basically like, yeah, you're not around a lot. Now Ahmed is spending a lot of time with Shannon. Notice that they're not here. And it's really giving Ryan kind of something to think about. Uh, like, is it going to be enough to help Alexandria? Is she even going to help Alexandria? Ryan goes back to continue doing what she's supposed to be doing and the dad is basically like, yeah, there's food in the kitchen if you want it, but she never takes his food because she feels like it's unfair that her brother is back home having their shitty food when she could be having like this random luxurious food, so she just never eats it. So she gets up to Alexandria's room and Alexandria is there, um, but she can't get through the skylight by herself, so Ryan decides to help her and basically now they're both sitting on the roof just waiting. Alexandria is kind of mad that she touched her stuff and that type of thing, but like that seems like the least of her problems at this point. At midnight, Ryan tries to go home and Alexandria's like, I stay up until one, you can leave if you want. Ryan's like, fine, so she lays back down. And then at one, she helps Ryan back into the house and then sleepily goes home. Ryan comes to school late in a perfect mirror of like the first day of school that we saw her in, which was just wonderful. And Ahmed's like, where have you been? And she's like, you've also been busy and is basically being a jerk about the whole him having a girlfriend thing in the cutest way. And I really like their relationship. Because of their little scuffle in history class, they were both ended up in detention where they got to talk to each other and now they're ditching detention because apparently they're badasses. Ahmed and Ryan hang out at the beach until it gets dark and I imagine she's now on the way to Alexandria's. Ahmed has this kind of aversion to maybe adding Alexandria to the group because the last person that got added, Thomas, is a dick and always will be a dick and has always been a dick, but he's basically just given his blessing for Ryan to try to become Alexandria's friend. So Ryan shows up and she smells a little bit like weed because Ahmed was smoking weed. Alexandria just goes off on her and is being a jerk and Ryan's just like, I know that being rude is your thing, but do you have to constantly be rude? and then Alexandria lists off all the reasons why she would be rude to Ryan and uh, Ryan basically says she's sorry. Alexandra was under the impression that everybody had laughed when she fell off the roof and she's like that did not happen. Everybody was really scared when you fell off the roof. And the whole thing that started this off is Ryan had needed a pencil on that first day and she asked the guy in front of her. He didn't have a pencil so that guy asked Alexandria and she was like, Ryan Bird can get her own pencils. I think they're finally going to talk about the fact that Ryan Bird doesn't have a lot of money. So it turns out that Alexandria did not join Ryan on the roof this evening, but when she comes back down, Alexandra's basically like, you have sticky fingers like looking at her bookshelves. And she's like, also you can borrow whatever books you want. So against all odds, Ryan is still going. Alexandria is still letting her be there. They're still there just looking at the stars and waiting for something to come through. Ryan's reading her books. Uh, Alexandria is playing with this galaxy switch thing that she's converted into something that plots the course of her mother's ship, I guess. They're not exactly friends, but they're not exactly not 
friends. In this chapter we get to learn a little bit more in very few words about how she met the other people in her crew and basically how she helped save their lives or how they have impacted hers and it's such an economy of words. This book is so good. Alexandria started to open up a little bit about how long they've been waiting for transmissions and how many they've had and Ryan has invited her to have lunch with her friends and Alexandria got defensive again like why would I do that and she's like because then you don't have to be alone. Shock of all shocks, Alexandria showed up on the hill where they're all having lunch at lunchtime and it's great. She's just slowly working her way in there at her own pace and I love it. Ryan gets to Alexandria's and the dad is just like here's a key, you haven't stolen anything the whole time you've been here and I don't want to answer the door every time you get here. She goes upstairs and she finds Alexandria reading a letter which says that Scout is taking on more young girls to send in another cohort and Ryan's like, why would you want to do that? It's not like you're going to be able to catch up with your mom. And Alexandra gets mad and throws her out of the house. Ryan goes home and she's just mad and confused and angry as to why Alexandra would want to like leave her family. It's not like Alexandra's dad has anyone and he would probably be upset if she left. Ryan gets to school late again and that sentence seems to be a running thing in this which I really enjoy and Alexandria will not look at her and she passes a note forward to her that says I'm sorry and Alexandria looks at it for like five minutes before crumpling it up and putting it in her pocket. Ryan checks in with Mrs. Marsh and is just like I don't know what I did like I did something and she's mad at me but I don't know why and she kind of explains the situation and uh, basically Mrs. Marsh is like well you're reacting because that's the way that you would react and family means different things to different people and there's this one quote that I want to read which is reading about something isn't the same as living through it every story has many sides depending on where you're standing when it happens so even though Ryan has like read about Scout and all of the impact on it she hasn't actually talk to Alexandria about it so it doesn't know how Alexandria feels. Ryan tracks down Alexandria who doesn't want to take her apology and she's basically like I understand that I don't know what this means to you but I want you to tell me about it. They go back to Alexandria's and she's just basically like why are you helping me why and Ryan's just like I know enough to know that something's important and I want the opportunity to be there for important things and Alexandria's like I guess that's fine. Alexandria opened up a little bit basically talking about how when her mom was chosen for the trip she's on she was one of like 20 million people that applied and how Ryan talking about it like it's a field trip she probably shouldn't go on made it very apparent that they, it means two very separate things to them and she's basically like if you still want to help me you can but like you're gonna have to understand some shit. Ryan lets Alexandria know that she knew from the first day of school she knew who she was and Alexandra's like I could tell because you were treating me differently. Ryan explains that she did a project about Scout last year so everything she knows about Scout she knows from other people's perspectives and not Alexandra's and Alexandra's like I can tell you my perspective you just have to ask. Alexandria is opening up about how things went with her mom, how many people applied, her mom was accepted. When her mom was accepted she was already pregnant but didn't know until she got there and the training was about a year so by the time they left Scout dropped off Alexandria with her dad who knew nothing about her and she was already three or four months old and he was not emotionally prepared, he hadn't even graduated high school yet and that's just the life they're on which explains why he is super paranoid about things. Ryan comes home exhausted and has a conversation with James while she's making some dinner and finds out that Charlie said his first word which she gets really excited about. She's like why do I miss all the good things and then finds out that it's a word that she has literally never said to Charlie before which means that she's figured out that James talks to Charlie but James doesn't talk to anyone else. On the roof with Alexandria, Ryan takes one of her notebook pages and makes a paper crane out of it and Alexandria's just like, how do you know how to do that? And at this point Ryan is sarcastic, he's like, oh my parents hired a tutor and it's like, no, just my little brother learned it once and he taught me and now Alexandria is being taught how to do it. They stayed up way too late but Alexandria now knows how to make a paper crane like a perfect one. The whole group just casually sits down with Alexandria at her lunch table where she's usually alone and just invites her into the conversation they're having about how the person that Ahmed is seeing's exes has said some very racist things so they're thinking that Ryan might beat him up this weekend and somebody else's parents are going away so they're probably gonna have a house party and Ryan's going to make sure that Alexandria goes. Alexandria starts 
started asking Ryan about the people in the group and why they're all friends and Ryan's like we have nothing in common but here are the things that you need to know about us. Basically talks about how one of them really likes theater and Shannon's the nicest one but she's scared of Alexandria so like maybe talk to her. And then she finally asks about James and asks if he's deaf and Ryan just opens up that something bad happened and he hasn't wanted to talk since and that's kind of where they leave that conversation. Ryan wakes up in the morning and it's really cold in the trailer to the point where she's scared that Charlie might not be alive so she gets up and is really happy to find out that James has Charlie in his room but they are also very cold and she's like I'm gonna make us something warm to eat now. To make the something warm, Ryan leaves the house, walks about a mile, takes some apples off of a tree, brings them home, mashes them up, adds some sugar and some butter and some candy, and basically makes a warm thing and then puts the rest of it in jars, and takes one of those jars all the way back to the orchard and leaves it under one of the trees, basically as like a penance for taking apples. Alexandria and Ryan finished their roof activities early so they go to Thomas's party. This should be interesting. I don't know that Alexandria has ever been to a party because she's been doing this sitting on the roof thing for literal years, so who knows. This party is like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. It seems very chaotic. If I was Alexandra, I would be scared. She's basically like, don't leave me with these people, and Ryan's like, I got you. I think it's time for me to put some food in my system because I will want food in my system before I sit in my bathtub later and read this book and drink a beer because it's Wednesday. That's what I do on Wednesdays. So I'm gonna grab some food. I'm 32% of the way through this book and we'll pick it up in the bath. I finished my drink and I'm still waiting for my fake chicken fingers to fry. I decided to read another chapter and the kids are playing. The kids are playing. Oh my god, I sound like the oldest person ever. The people at the party are playing three minutes in heaven because seven minutes is too long and basically Shannon didn't want Alexandria to have to go with this dick that Shannon used to date so they went in the closet and just like talked for three minutes and then uh, as punishment she had to go in the closet with him and he was doing something super inappropriate so Ryan literally broke down the door and beat the crap out of him him and now they have to leave the party. Time for food and figuring out what happened in the aftermath of that fight. So somebody called the cops and apparently Connor just gets to leave and the cops want to start some shit with Ryan and she's about to like yell at them when uh, Thomas just decides to like pay each of them $200 to go away. And they do. Turns out shitbag dad is a cop, which is why he's not gonna see any punishment for what he did. Everybody's basically figuring out where they're going. Alexandra's dad is already on the way and is gonna drive Ryan home. Shannon is staying there because that was already the plan. And Ahmed, Shannon's boyfriend, is also gonna stay there. So yeah, we'll see where this next bit goes. Alexandra's dad gets there and is like, Shannon, do your parents know where you are? And she's like, no, they're away in New York. And he's like, you're coming with me too. So I guess it's a girl's sleepover. Ryan is wishing she got the door open quicker, even though she got it open real damn quick, and Shannon's like, it's not your fault. It's not Franklin's fault that Connor is a shithead and didn't realize his friend is a predator. It's nobody's fault but Connor's. Let's just chill the fuck out. And now she's like, hey, you guys go and watch the stars sometimes. Can we do that? And they're both like, yeah, let's do that just as something because like nobody's going to sleep right now after that. So Shannon has fallen asleep on the roof and Ryan and Alexandra are talking about what happened. And Alexandra was with Shannon like as Ryan was beating the crap out of Connor. So she asked her like what happened and they went to see Ahmed and Ahmed knew something was wrong and like wouldn't touch her, would just like be are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? Like cupping her face but not actually touching her face. So he currently still doesn't know what happened. He just went into damage control just knowing something had happened. And apparently after parties, Ahmed's parents are always feeding everybody breakfast. So she's just like, we're gonna go to his house tomorrow morning to see him because they're expecting us anyway. Ryan wakes up the next morning in Alexandria's bed and is disoriented and like, why am I here? And then she's kind of upset that it's Shannon and not Alexandria because Alexandria took the floor. Shannon catches her just like watching Alexandria sleep on the floor and she's like, I didn't want to wake her up. And Shannon's like, yeah, well, we got to get up. We're going to breakfast. I am a hot, sweaty mess because, well, it finally became summer. 
a little bit late, but whatever. Um, so that's a perfect time to segue into drawing myself a bath, grabbing my beer, taking my bookstagram photo that I take every Wednesday, and then continuing the book. The funny thing about taking those Instagram shots is because the books are on my phone, I have to send a picture of the cover to my boyfriend's phone and then take a picture of the cover on his phone with my beer on my phone so I can post it to Instagram. This is the world we live in. I only redid my hair the other day, which is why there's blue all over my neck and there will be for like a week. Uh, but we're gonna do our best to not get my hair wet in this bath and then get hair dye all over everything I own even more than I already do. So they arrive at Ahmed's house and he's like, shit, Alexandria probably doesn't know about my family situation, this being the person that has two dads and a mom and they're all together. So he basically has to be like, you can't come into my house if you're gonna be shitty about this, so you're gonna have weird questions about it or what and she's completely accepting of it and she's just like you're gonna feed me that's fine i'm not gonna be a shithead in your house and he's so relieved because people used to bully him and it really upset one of his dads and it's such a whole thing and like fuck i love this care i love these characters i love this found family i love these actual families they interact with this is great also yeah there's a towel on my head you're just gonna have to deal with that the loving but teasing dynamic between Ahmed's dads is adorable and I love them and I want to adopt them and this just went so well and it's great. They go on a walk after breakfast and Ahmed makes sure that Shannon is okay and asks if she needs anything and how she wants to deal with it and that's all super wonderful. And uh, then she says that she stole the receiver from Alexandria's house and Alexandra's like, why would you do that? And she's like, we need to walk around town and find a better setup than you currently have for receiving and then my brother has a better recorder that he's not using and we could just set it up to record 24 hours a day. So they're gonna spend their Saturday walking around looking for a better signal and that's just wonderful. So they're still walking around, they've gotten bored enough that Ahmed is asking questions and he's like, have you ever like asked Scout if you can just have their recordings? And she's like, my dad tried that years ago and because that's a public company, they don't have to give me anything. Whereas if it was NASA, they would have to because it's governmentally funded. Or government funded. He's just like, well, did your dad actually ask or not? And not saying that your dad's a liar, but maybe you should ask again just in case. There are very random parts of this book that are just so intriguing. Like they've been wandering around, they get to this like abandoned warehouse in this industrial area and they're like, what is this? And Ahmed's literally answers, a structurally unstable remnant of my dad's criminal past. I need more details, sir. What the hell? And it looks like this place might be a good place to set up a receiver, but they want to do it safely, so they're going to go get Blake and Thomas and like hazard equipment, and then they're gonna come back after eating. So they're all on the way to the warehouse with appropriate safety supplies, including masks, wear a mask, just saying. And Alexandria's like, why are all of you helping me? And everybody says why, like one of them's like, you're interesting, or Ahmed's like, you helped Shannon, so I wanna help you. And Shannon is just like, I think this is great. And this is the first time that we find out that Ryan used to be really into science back when her parents were alive and just kind of gave up that dream when they died because obviously she's busy raising her brother and her brother's kid and they don't have the means to do it. And uh, Alexandria's just like, side-eyeing her and I wonder if she's gonna try to push her to apply for the next round of Scout. But they walk into this place and it seems like it was on fire at some point and basically they've decided that yes this is where they're actually going to get the best signal so they're kind of cleaning it up so that it'll be easy to like come and sit and listen to the recorder or whatever they need to do that. So we still don't know why, but Ahmed's dad's burned this place down and uh, therefore he thinks it's haunted, which makes zero sense, but whatever. But they would basically be very mad if they knew that all the teenagers were hanging out there, so they can't tell them. Most of them have left, but Alexandria and Ryan are staying behind to kind of fiddle with the equipment and see if they can get anything on the first try. Ryan and Alexandria decide that they're both going to check to see if Alexandria's dad was lying about checking in with Scout. And yeah, they're totally friends, even if they wouldn't say it, which at this point they might start saying it. They're totally friends and I love it. Thomas and Ryan are apparently in band together and he asked her if he could come like the first night to listen to stuff. And she's kind of like, uh, it might cramp her style because if he comes, then the whole group might come and it might be a nightly party. So she basically says, 
You have to ask Alexandria. I hope by this far into the vlog you know it's full of spoilers because Alexandria calls Ryan in the middle of class to tell her that she started looking at her dad's stuff and it turns out he used to work for Scout and he's probably definitely lying. Alexandria and Ryan meet up at lunch and Alexandria is going to tell her the story but we still don't know the story and the next chapter is the next day and ah. Uh, this is so readable because you just want to keep going. Okay, so this is a big chapter. Essentially, Ryan sets down all her friends except for Alexander and is like, okay, so I need your help with a heist and they take it really well. She wants to take Alexandria's dad's pass from when he worked at Scout because they're still using the same security system to break into Scout and get all of the messages that have come back from that mission that went away with her mom. And uh, people are like, yeah, I can help, but I can't do certain parts because I can't get in certain types of trouble. Uh, this friend group. I love it. I love it so much. It's gotten really cold so they can't go to the warehouse and they're going to be doing their listening from Alexandria's roof and Ryan doesn't really want to because it's cold and she's also going to have to talk to Alexandria about her plan to get the things from Scout which is going to be a whole thing. Even though it's snowing, they're up on the roof, but Alexandria's dad has made this like retractable awning they can put over themselves. And then also they have a whole situation where they're both in this one giant sleeping bag with heated blankets. And uh, it seems pretty cozy to me. And she's just like, what? You don't think I would have figured out a way to do this 365 days out of the year? Like, obviously I did and uh, Ryan is looking up ways to try to get an even better signal because her and Blake are pretty decent at engineering apparently. I love this. <laughs> Alexandria fell asleep on the roof and it's midnight so they're going back in and Ryan is helping her back in the window as she always does and there is definitely some sexual tension going on but they're both cowards and nothing happens. Ahmed and Ryan have ditched class because Ahmed is upset because one of his dads is sick. Like it, from what he's saying it sounds like he deals with depression but I don't know 100% that's what it is and he's just hard sick about maybe losing one of his parents just because they all rely on each other so heavily and it's just such a big thing and he loves seeing his parents look at each other in moments where they've done things the other parents love and how much love they show each other and it's just such an interesting dynamic and I really like it and he's also noticed that Ryan looks at someone, I'm going to assume Alexandria, with a similar way. They go back to Ahmed's and uh, they're gonna like make some food from the fridge and then one of the dads comes home and is like, no, you're not gonna use my very expensive cheese to make this weird food you're talking of. And he like literally makes some pita pockets with butter chicken and mozzarella from scratch. He doesn't eat any of it himself grabs an apple and is like, okay, when you want to go home, let me know, and goes back upstairs. I have a feeling that that is the father that is not doing well, but who knows. We finally met Ahmed's mom, who is just so sweet and lovely and drives Ryan home, like, right to her door, which is such a luxury for Ryan, and I just love her. I love it. I love it so much. James is pushing her to, like, do better with her grades because she's got time to study because Alexander's out of town for a thing, and she's just like, I'm not going to college, we need the money, and you can't eat grades. And he's just like, you will take out student loans, we will figure it out. You need to do what you need to do for you. I know you wanted to follow in mom's footsteps back when mom was still alive. And like, the amount of love in this book is just phenomenal. Alexandria is back, Ryan has finally told her the plan, and she is so down for it, and it's going to happen. I need to get out of this bathtub because I'm a sweaty gross mess and I think it's just time to be not here because I didn't think there would be so many updates from my bathtub with me wearing a towel on my head, but here we are. I am 50% through this book and part of me really just wants to read the whole book until I can't anymore or until I finish it. So I might do that or I might, you know, break to sleep and then get up and read it in the morning. We will find out, you will find out in this vlog. I relocated outside to the patio, which is lovely for me, but also there are birds, there are dogs, there's wind. Who knows how long I'll stay out here, uh, but I'm gonna get on to the next chapter and uh, this idea of staying up is really attractive. Let's see what happens, cause I'm old. So Alexandria and Ryan get to the warehouse and it's very apparent that Thomas and Blake have been there because it's kind of been cleaned up a bit and 
Alexander offhandedly says, oh, it'd be great if we could have a bonfire. And Ryan's like, I, I, I could make you a bonfire. And Alexander is like, you see, you're very handy. Did you know that? And like, there's so much blushing going on and it's fucking cute. So it is only at this point that Ryan is realizing she has a crush on Alexandra and she's reflecting back on the last crush she had, which was like three years ago. And it was Thomas and he's gay and she's mostly a lesbian, but also sometimes likes guys. So they had a whole long talk and it was just really embarrassing and she just has not bothered to have a crush on anyone since and now she's being delightfully crush and cute about it and uh, that's a whole thing and I'm here for it. Bonfire is made Alexander opening up about the fact that she trusts people for the first time. She also opened up about the fact that she used to smoke and it's because she was followed by paparazzi a lot and she just kind of wanted to die because of that. And she stopped smoking a couple of weeks after she got to this town because she felt like she could breathe again, which is just such an interesting dynamic. So it turns out their school doesn't do exams in December. They have a big dance that is mandatory but free. And Shannon, Alexandra, and Ryan are putting up posters for it, but the dean of the school is just like, I didn't know you guys were all friends. And Shannon's like, um, I sit next to Ryan every day at lunch and Alexandria is new. And aren't we supposed to be welcoming of new people? And the dean is still looking at Ryan with Stinka, which is just, uh. So they're putting up posters talking about how the dean is a giant bitch and just talking about the formal and who are you taking and I think that Shannon might have caught on to the fact that there's some attraction between the other two girls but we still don't know if Alexandria likes girls. And she's taking it upon herself to outfit the other girls because one has never been to a school dance, Alexandria. Ryan is just like, maybe I'll wear one of my dad's suits and she's like, yeah, no, that's not happening. Come to my house, we're figuring it out. Oh, Shannon 100% knows what she's doing and I love her for it. it is is, uh, however a little bit chilly outside so I'm gonna move inside to continue reading. This was good while it happened. Alexandria just did Ryan's makeup and then it got very sexually charged and then of course Shannon broke into the room by accident and got in the way of things. It's also cute and tense and I love it. So this dance is an 80s party and one of Ahmed's dads walks by the bathroom as the makeup is being put on Ryan so she can look like Adam Ant who even I don't know who that is and he just kind of looks and he's very confused about it and then uh, his husband's like you were only six in the 80s, and I'm just like, oh my god, these parents, these parents were born when I was born, weren't they? Oh no. Oh no. We are just slightly enough in the future that I'm about the age of the parents in this book, not the teenagers. Not that I thought I was a teenager, closer to parent age than I am, like, protagonist age in YA books, and this is a realization. So the dance was kind of a disaster before Ryan, Ahmed, and Shannon even got there. Either Blake or Thomas, I'm not even sure which one, punched somebody and got kicked out. So both of them are outside and uh, it's too hot in the gym and there's no punch because somebody spiked it and it got poured out. So Shannon and Ahmed were left to like have a night together and Ryan went out to meet her friends and she can't find Alexandria anywhere and apparently she showed up and then one of the boys said something and she she went home and it's all this big tragic thing because she's definitely also feeling Ryan but it hasn't happened yet and it's so sad. In this chapter they just finalized who's going for the break-in, who's not, what they can do during the break-in. They are actually doing a heist and they're making sure to do it before anyone's 18 so it can be taken off their records and I'm just like, wow. James didn't really know about any of this, but he knows that something is happening, so he confronts Ryan about it, and she basically tells him the plan, and he's not happy. He starts digging through their parents' stuff, which has just been kept in the trailer in sealed boxes since they died, and now we're reading a letter. I was wrong. She wasn't reading a letter from the box. She got an address from the box and ended up sending a letter to somebody that her mom used to work with at NASA, and now she's getting a letter back. The doctor wrote back basically saying, I can't believe that Scout isn't telling you anything about this and that sucks. We have some like public images that we could possibly share if you were to come by. And also it's great to hear from you even though it's super weird. So it's, it's back and forth letters at this point. Okay, so a couple more letters back and forth. Basically Ryan wrote saying that we would love to get any information you have. Can I bring my friend Alexandria? And the doctor basically said that because it's a military operation, that's not a possibility, but he, the doctor could bring Ryan in because she's next of kin to somebody that used to work there and she's not allowed to record anything while she's there but she could like come and see what the doctor has and she's like yes yes please i want to do that they show up and the guy that's showing them around thinks that james went deaf in the same accident that happened to their parents and it still hasn't 
explain what that accident is and that's because James like said hello but then pointed to his ear because apparently this is easier than him just having someone explain that he is nonverbal. That's his choice but Ryan is scandalized by it. So what we've basically found out is NASA can receive this information but some of it technically is belonging to Scout and they can't distribute it so the sound recordings that come from Scout they can't distribute because they're licensed differently than images that they've seen so they're allowed to show images but but only because these are children of somebody who used to work at NASA and they can't just widely distribute them. So I'm interested to see what kind of images we're going to get and how they're going to be able to explain them to Alexandria later. Looking at the images just felt mostly weird is what the vibe was and afterwards Mr. Takanara is like, you both look like you could have a cup of tea. So I've gone down to the cafeteria to do just that. So we're sitting down and he's talking about how when she was younger she used to run around NASA and everybody thought that she was super curious and amazing and thought that she would eventually end up working there. She's like, well, I have different priorities now, and he's going to sit down now and explain a little bit more about the mission. This chapter talks more about the history of the mission and how it was a big scandal that everybody was really appalled that this person was on the mission that had just recently had a baby, and I'm sitting here thinking, if it was some dude who's partner had just had a baby, nobody would care. So like, why are they now suddenly putting sanctions on space travel, and basically to make sure it never happens again? Don't really understand that. Ryan and James get back from NASA, and James is basically like, you can go and try to get these things, but be careful, and does Alexandria know about the loneliness of space? And he isn't completely okay with it happening, but he's given his blessing anyway. It's heist time. Alexandria's dad's pass has gotten them on property. Alexandria and Ryan are going in. Blake is waiting in the car as the getaway driver. I guess they're doing this. They're in. They figured out the internet password, which was super easy and ridiculous, and they're looking on their separate devices to try to figure out if they can get um, access to files on the network, and they're so intently doing that that they don't realize there's somebody else in the building until a flashlight beam is on them. So it's the security guard that technically let them in because he was in the little security booth when they scan the pass to go in, so they might not get in trouble, but we'll find out. So it was looking like they were just going to get their photos taken and just going to look at the security footage make sure they didn't steal anything and then they would go, but I think he's noticed who Alexandria is and he's called someone to come down and there might be a problem. The guy the security guard called shows up and takes one look at Alexandria and is just like, I know exactly who that is and calls her by name and Ryan ends up just introducing herself because there's no way Alexandria is going to shake this random man's hand, but that is not her style. But Roland says that John the security guard can go and John is just like, it's good to see you again, kid, because apparently he held Alexandria the first day she was alive on the day she was born. And the revelation of this from Roland gets Roland slapped in the face by Alexandria. In this chapter, Roland tells Alexandria about how he basically bullied her mother into signing an NDA so she couldn't talk about the fact that she was having a baby and couldn't tell the father that she was having a baby until she'd already left. And then he basically just had to like give the baby over and they sued and obviously her father was not happy and they've been kind of watching the family ever since and the whole name of the book kind of came up in this chapter as well which was neat to see. It didn't say it exactly in the same way but that's where we get the name of the book. In this chapter Roland reveals that on the next shuttle to go out there was going to be a spot that was going to go to like a contest winner, like an everyman type of character, just somebody who could be okay for space travel but didn't have to be a genius or whatever, and Alexandra is now given a week to decide if she wants that space. Also Roland gave her a flash drive of a bunch of information about her mom, supposedly. We haven't looked at it yet obviously so we don't know, but that is a lot to take in. They're leaving and Alexandra is crying but they just need to leave and get in Thomas's car and just go. So that's what they're doing. Thomas and Blake are in the car and they're just like, what is wrong? And Ryan's like, we met the CEO, we talked to him for a while, we just need to leave, I'll tell you about it later. They're out of state so they booked a hotel to stay at that night and the boys are sharing a bed in the same room that the girls would be sharing a bed if Alexandra wasn't just crying on the balcony. And then Shannon and Ahmed have a different room. The boys were supposed to have a third room but they decided to all stay in the same place. Place just for comfort's sake. Ryan wakes up and Alexandria is smoking again just because she's devastated and kind of looks over at the boys and is like, are they a thing now? And Ryan's just like, 
I don't know, but I've been wondering for years, so who knows if that's going to be a thing, but it's decided that they are going to tell the whole group what happened. Alexandria has decided she wants Ryan to take her place on the space shuttle, and they've essentially pinky promised that she's going to. Everyone in the room has woken up, and there's an is there or isn't there whole thing going on between the boys that... Who knows? And did they hear things? And I don't... I don't, I don't know, man. I, I've got questions. <laughs> also, I guess I was wrong. I guess Shannon booked the rooms, but Shannon and Ahmed aren't there. They're all driving back now, and Ryan has been forwarded all of the text information from Roland uh, that was sent to Alexandria about the spot that she is now apparently taking. Don't know how James is going to take it. They get back to the warehouse, and they start telling the story, and Thomas jumps in to basically say, I overheard you guys. I know that that position that was offered to Alexandria is going to you. You're the bigger asshole here for just not coming out and saying it than I am for just saying it. And uh, yeah, James is not taking it great. He ran off and Ryan has run after him. James is essentially upset because he knows she needs to go and he wants her to go. He just thought he would have more time with her before she went off and did bigger things than be there. And there was even a quote where we found out about the circumstances of Charlie's birth and that type of thing. But the most interesting part of the quote is, love is not about holding people where you want them, it's about doing what's the best for them because you need them to be okay. And that's the whole reason why Charlie is with James and not with the woman who happened to birth him. They get back to the warehouse and Ahmed is just like, I'm not going to talk to you about this because this is a decision you're going to have to make on your own and I don't want to influence it. But they found out that they can locate all the audio files and there's a folder that's specifically for family so they're all going to sit down and listen to it together. Day zero, Effie is just really excited to be in space and it's so surreal because she knows that Raleigh doesn't know that she was pregnant and like there's no sorry or anything there's just she's excited and she wishes she could share this and she misses people and that's what it is. And then she doesn't record another message until day 178. From this one, it seems like she's been able to get transmissions from at least home base, if not Raleigh altogether, which is just perplexing because Alexander has been wanting to send messages, but that's not something she's capable of doing. But I guess when he was still working at Scout, he could do that. And I bet this is not something that Alexandra knows about. Also, like, her mom knows her name is Alex and asks after her and was said she was sorry for basically just leaving a baby on the doorstep, but it makes me question whether or not he definitely didn't know at all, or, or what, because you would think there would be a lot more of an explanation, but there just isn't. We know from this message that Raleigh was able to get a message for Effie for her birthday, but without Scout knowing, so I don't exactly know how that went down, but They've definitely been in communication. I highly doubt they're still in communication because that was like a year into the mission, but who knows? There could be a whole host of things that Alex just doesn't know. This is killing me a little bit because you know they're eventually going to get to a point where they can't send messages back and forth because they're out of range. She has some regrets. She wishes she could have just stayed and was with him and she even says because the stars are beautiful but I'd give them up for good just to see your face, so such a difficult situation because it's not like she can do literally anything about it. At this point they're all really missing food that they can no longer get because they're not on earth and one of the other people is teaching her Mandarin because she's going a little bit nuts not being able to talk to somebody in the languages she thinks in so she's picked some of that up. She still really misses everybody. What can you do? She learned guitar and sent a song back for Alex who has probably never heard it and also signs off with love you to the moon and back which at one point is sweet and then at one point you're like you're way further away than the moon so how far is that? They just passed Jupiter and it made her remember why they're out there and getting the human perspective on this travel and that's just too much for me to think about right now at this point, let's not lie. She's about five years into the mission and one of the other people has committed suicide because she can't take it anymore and she is just furious that they got 18 year olds to agree to doing this because of course 18 year olds would say yes because 18 year olds don't understand what it means to live an entire life like 
50, 60, 70 years on a goddamn spaceship by themselves, not getting to go home and be with their families and all of that type of thing. One of the quotes from this letter is, I gave up my family for rocks and ice and the sound of fucking beeping all night long for the rest of my life. And she ends by saying, I'm not living out here, Raleigh. I'm just out here. And it's so fucking heartbreaking. Two of the crew members got married and Effie called it ages ago, which is adorable, but she's also really missing Raleigh and she keeps referring to Alexandra as the kid and she wants to be a part of her life even though she's never going to be able to hear back from her and she's doing a lot of speculating on what their lives look like now because she can't hear anything back from them and <sighs> it's a lot. At this point Alexandra would be 12 and she started just sending her messages but it doesn't seem like they're very frequent. Um, but of course things could be cut out because otherwise this book would be like three times as long, so who knows. They're getting further and further away and there's nothing she can do about that. They passed Pluto's orbit and she's come to the terms with this is all that I am and this is where I am going and she's kind of made peace with what is now her life. And she signed it off with to the moon and back until the end of time. And we're finally going back to the kids and seeing their reactions. Ryan and James are now home after hearing all of those messages and there's already a package from Scout that she's going to have to like fill out the application all these things and she's still planning on going even after hearing those messages which just I have no words. I guess because he knows he only has a few more months with his sister he's finally opened up about how he ended up getting a girl pregnant, why Charlie now lives with them, that whole circumstance, and like, I'm quite frankly surprised that I'm not bawling my eyes out, to be perfectly honest. So Ryan goes back to the orchard where she's been stealing apples and then returning with applesauce and jumps over the for fence and goes to like the main office and asks to speak to somebody in charge and eventually she gets to speak to like the old guy that owns the place and he's just like, you're the one that's been stealing my apples and she's like, well, oh shit, he's mad at me already. This is not going to be good. And she asks him to give her flying lessons because he's the only registered instructor in like 30 miles or something like that. He tells her the story of when he bought the land. He knew that there was going to be people stealing apples just because of the area they were in and he planted a few more rows of trees closer to the office to make up for it and eventually they put in cameras so he had seen her jumping over to get apples but she was the only one that ever jumped back and left something and for a long time they just threw it out because they were like we don't know what this is, what she's done with it, but eventually his granddaughter daughter tried some and it's become like a family thing where at the holidays his wife tries to like replicate it because it's so good. So he says he'll give her flying lessons if she gives him the recipe. And for whatever reason, this is the part that started to make me cry. Reed takes her up in a plane just to give her a feel for it, and it's literally the first time she's ever been in a plane, and it's exhilarating and scary, and she looks as white as a sheet when she gets down, and he's just like, why are you doing this? And she's like, I need to go somewhere, and this is the only way I can do it. And he's like, why can't somebody else get you there? And she's like, they just can't. I don't think she's going to tell him what she's going to do with this newly acquired skill. Ryan has gone to scout basically to have her medical tests before she does everything else and uh, it seems like they might have been following her for a while which is kind of freaking her out. Ryan gets back to town and goes to Alexandria's house to tell her how the tests went and her key doesn't work in the door and then her dad is like you're not welcome here anymore and she's grounded and she can't talk to you so Ryan just leaves. So uh, I guess he uh, found out about their excursions. Alexandria has snuck out and is near Ryan's house because Blake gave her the address and Ryan is mad because Ryan has spent over a year making sure that Alexandria doesn't know she lives in a trailer and uh, she knows now. She's going out to like tell Alexandria how everything went and uh, she's pretty mad at Blake. Ryan takes Alexandria to the trailer and is basically just like, well, here's where I live. And James is just freaking out because he's like, I didn't realize somebody was coming over. Why is she here? Like, she doesn't know about our circumstances. And Ryan's just like, there's my room, James's room, bathroom, and you know, we used to have a smaller trailer, but I just recently upgraded to this one. And Alexandria is just like, wow, your place is beautiful. You've made such a wonderful home. And it's just such a 
great reaction. They talk about how it went at Scout and it's starting to go from the horrible like dissociation of how weird the situation is to accepting that this might actually be happening. I finish talking about everything and it's getting late and Ryan's like, do you want to stay because it's pretty dodgy to walk around but if you think your dad's gonna wake up and be mad you can go and Alexander's like, you don't have to make up excuses, I'm going to stay, so. I don't know, maybe they're gonna have one night together before Alexandria and Ryan just can never be together because Ryan is leaving the planet forever. Nope, nope, not at all, and I think it's because Alexandria is realizing that if they started something, it's not like they could continue it, and that's hard. They woke up pretty close to each other, but still not intimate in the, any sort of way, and are just kind of moving on with their lives. Reed is doing a really good job of teaching her how to fly and I think she's going to be set to go. Reed is delighted with her progress and is just like, you are going to be a pilot before you even graduate high school and let me know when that happens and I'll be so proud. And she's like, I know what I want to do to celebrate if it's okay with you, but it kind of leaves off and I have a feeling she's going to want to take Alexandria flying. Like, that's going to happen. Before Ryan needs to leave to go to her flight exam, they decided to do one more night on the roof even though Alexandria's dad doesn't know about it and uh, basically it's promised that if Ryan goes Alexandria is going to listen for her messages. This chapter is so short I'm going to read the whole thing to you. Ryan mailed her flight exam results to Scout. Then she stared up at the sun and thought about how daytime doesn't exist in space. That's it. That's the whole chapter. I was right, she totally takes Alexandria up in a plane at night because of the whole space thing, but Alexandria freaks out and does not want to be up there anymore, so I wonder if part of the reason why she wanted Ryan to go was she just can't stomach the idea of flying? I don't know. Ryan lands, gets Alexandria out of the plane, reassures her that she would never do anything to harm her, and basically is like, I'm gonna return the plane, and then I'll take you home. And at this point I'm sure they're gonna talk about how Alexandria can't fly. It's not the flying, it's the fact that she doesn't want to fall in love with Ryan even though she's already in love with Ryan because she knows that it's going to be so painful when Ryan leaves. And uh, now they finally made out and they're gonna break back into her own house. And maybe um, do some things, uh, who knows. Oh yeah, they're in love, and oh yeah, is there ever a fade to black at the end of that chapter. The morning after, Ryan gets a text from Ahmed, and he's basically just decided that they're probably together now, and it's just really cute how they know each other so well, and also he's already making jokes about it, and Alexandria asks her to prom, and Ryan's just like, no, because homecoming was terrible, but I do want to dance with you once before I go. Ryan goes by Miss Marsh's office to basically tell her she's quitting high school two months before graduation, and Miss Marsh is like, why? And she's like, uh, because I'm going to space instead, and also Alexander's my girlfriend, or at least she is until I go to space, and Miss Marsh does not take it well. She just kind of basically has a panic attack about the whole thing, and it's one of the most real reactions, I think, that anyone should have to this type of situation. Ryan and Alexandria go for a drive in this chapter and it's basically her just reflecting on what she thought her life was going to be and what it's actually going to be. Instead of going to prom, they throw an alternative prom in the burned down warehouse and there's a bunch of kids there and it's basically like a last big goodbye and it this is just so weird. Alexandria and Ryan get to dance, a slow dance, at this fake prom, and it's precious and everything I ever needed it to be. They're cleaning up for the dance when a message from Alexandria's mother legitimately comes through on the speaker they set up months ago. And just wow. Flash forward and she's done all her training and she's seeing all of her friends for the last time and her brother is now with Thomas which is new and Charlie's like talking and walking on his own and she's just leaving. And this next section is gonna be weird because it's, it's titled differently but like the next page literally just says when the time came she was ready. She's really doing this, she's really just going into space. Okay, that's the thing that's happening. So we have this section that's all these letters of what people have said about them going into space and what it feels like, and then the last two letters are Alexandra's mom, and then Ryan. And there's about 5% left, so <laughs> let's see what happens. It's 19 years later and Ryan gets a message from Alexandria saying that she's coming, which was a pinky promise. A 
Apparently she needed to like get a master's degree and then a doctorate before NASA would even hire her, but the ships are way faster now, so if she's done the math right, which, you know, hopefully she has, she'll be there where Ryan is in three years, and if they choose to do so, they can turn around and be back on Earth in four years. <gasps> that is a very good way to end the book. Oh. Whew. Okay, uh, when I sat down to start doing this vlog, I didn't think that I was gonna do it in one day. Like, it's, yeah, it's not even midnight yet, so it's still all the same day. Um, I thought I was gonna read it over a few days, like I did with the last time I did one of these vlogs, but this book was just so damn readable that I didn't want to stop. It just had to keep going. I changed my camera battery twice while doing this, but I still kept going, and this book is amazing. The book is very good. Like, obviously, I have questions <laughs> about things like custody and guardianship and all of these types of things, but this book was very good. And I'm very happy I decided to bring you on this adventure because this was extraordinary and I really enjoyed it. I don't know how much I'm gonna enjoy putting this together because I assume I have like an hour of footage again. Whatever, next time I do one of these I'll try to pick something that has longer chapters. <laughs> okay, well, uh, if you made it all the way to the end of this, please let me know in the comments that you did. That would really help me out just to know that somebody is watching this all the way through. If you've somehow made it all the way through and you've never subscribed to my channel, feel free to do that now. You can also like and share this as you see fit to anyone who may also love this book or doesn't mind being spoiled and just watching somebody read the book and completely break down while doing so. And uh, I will see you later. Bye!